Well, welcome back to Geocaching World. I'm Dave Dufour, and with me is Andy Head, Hard Hat Smith. And uh, be in the break here, we had just a question. Somebody wants to see more shows about tunnel caches, and you are heading off to tunnel cache land here pretty soon, Andy? I'll tell you what, it's nothing like having a guy that's 300 plus pounds trying to squeeze himself into <laughs> tunnels underground. Yeah, nothing yeah. more fun than that. Yeah, uh, and that and add a little well, bit. Well, you know what? Two, 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 three hundred guys trying to pound guys trying to stuff themselves into a tunnel cache, right? That'll be that'll be us when when I get into <laughs> Indiana. Okay, all right. <laughs> It'll either be that or a Stucky's. I don't know. Oh, we'll yeah, the Stucky is right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a lot of fun. There, I've been invited by uh, several geocachers, uh, hopefully either in the uh, in the summer or early, at the worst, uh, uh, early fall, to go and actually do some honest-to-goodness tunnel geocaching. Cool. So uh, be prepared to see me screaming like a little girl in real tight places. Uh, okay. Well, uh, we were going to look at some uh, urban hides just to kind of give some people some idea of what these things look like. Our first picture is, of, I think, of a uh, hide in a brick there. Yeah, one of the things that you're going to see a lot of times uh, is uh, brick hides because there are the big cement bricks, there are the smaller patio type bricks here. They're, they're just in all different shapes and, shapes and sizes and you tend to find them in urban areas. That also means your geocaches are going to be camouflaged to match those. Now this one's a simple 35 millimeter which happens to fit those small holes really well. Mm -hmm. But if you can imagine if you covered that top of that cap and used some textured paint with it to make it look, uh, there's stone based uh, right. uh, spray paints. It might not be so easy to find. Yeah, and it, it looks a little like maybe that rock there laying beside the brick might have possibly been something that could have been sitting in the hole, but I'm not sure. Now you're thinking. Yep. Well, anyway, that's that's what I get paid to do or something. <laughs> I don't know what. Anyway, what's our, our you do what's, it well, sir? Okay, what's our next picture? Let's look at this one. Oh, a a great hide, not as in great, like really great, but on a great, right? Yep, and it could be a great, great hide. Uh -huh. the, uh, what happens with these, uh, what you're seeing here is a magnetic key holder. And a lot of times, uh, great hides have that kind of a hood uh, at the base of the street that goes into the curb. And a lot of times right. those get hidden up into that because it kind of stays out of the elements. This one, somebody actually hood, uh, hid just in between uh, the grate itself. And if you look straight down and you look at that reflection, that's water. So one of the things that you want to remember when you pull one of these uh, key holders out of a grate, hang on to it extra tight, because if you drop it, uh, you're going to have a little difficult time trying to get it out. Now, I mean, one of the questions I always have about these, and you've shown these, and you've shown some that, that are actually hanging, you know, off of a mm -hmm. chain or something down into the grate. Um, but uh, a magnetic thing, is that, isn't that kind of susceptible to maybe some extra heavy water or going ahead and washing that away? Those key holders magnets are really, really super strong. So uh -huh. I have not had that much of a problem. It's user, usually operator error that causes them to get dropped. Okay. All right. So uh, so they're generally pretty permanent. But that's one of those cases also where you would uh, be, you know, just depending on the time of the year and your locale, be a little bit careful about critters, especially like spiders who like warm, wet, dark places kind of. Oh, yeah, you always want to use them. In fact, one of the things that I highly recommend uh, for a lot of these hides uh, are those inspection mirrors. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, yeah, we talked about those that Those are before. really nice. That, basically, what it is, you can get it at any auto store. Mm -hmm. uh, an inspection mirror is probably about uh, three, four inches by maybe two inches. Right. And, uh, and it's put on a uh, maybe a one-foot or two-foot telescopic uh, pole, and which makes it really easy to keep in your little pack when you go geocaching. And I'll tell you what, when it comes to, uh, to trying to find stuff in, in grates or areas that you can't see well, that inspection mirror is going to save you a lot of grief. Yeah, you know, I, after, after we talked about it last, uh, last episode, that one that I uh, had a DNF that drove me nuts, I'm thinking, I gotta, I, I've, been go I've gone by the auto supply place a couple of times, and I am definitely stopping in there because I've got to find that thing. So I did one of my lunchtime uh, geocaching caches that we're going to have in a, in a future episode that was also at a gazebo. Mm -hmm. So yes, you'll wait till you find out where that one was hidden. Uh, oh, cool. Okay. What's our next picture? Ooh. Now this is interesting. This can be held either in a um, 
wooded area or an urban area. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you want to hide it. What you're looking at, and obviously it looks like something that they're going to hide up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of geocachers don't think up all the time. They'll look down, they'll look at the, the roots of a tree, or they'll look at the base of a wall. They don't think to look up, and there's a lot of places to hide. Uh, what you're looking at here is actually a military uh, powder holding container. It's, mm -hmm. it's enough about the size of maybe a, a large canning jar, mm -hmm. and it has two butterfly hooks to hold the lid down. Very waterproof, very nice, very heavy duty. That's not going anywhere. Now that's okay for like a, like a, like an urban like a tree in an urban setting. Is that what you're thinking or an urban? I would in a case like that. Or sometimes I've actually seen stuff like that where they put it up two three stories up into the side of a building. Oh, okay, and then you uh, climb up there like a uh, like Spider Man, right, and get it. Or you do like me and untie the rope and have it come down. Oh, I see. Okay, all right, that's smarter. A little smarter. Okay, all right. What do we have this next here? Okay, bridge. This is another one that you're absolutely going to want that, that uh, uh, inspection mirror. Now, let's look at all the possibilities of where, where a geocache could be hidden. Mm -hmm. Inside of the guardrail towards the top where you put your hands, mm -hmm. especially where you see those two-by-fours uh, that are going uh, down to the floor. Right. All those are nooks and crannies that people can hide them. Then you have the actual bridge itself where you have to go underneath the bridge mm -hmm. to see where it can be hidden. And that's a very popular place to look for geocaches. It's, there's tons of uh, nooks and crannies. Again, that inspection mirror is going to save you some time. But I'll tell you what, depending on the difficulty of the geocache, sometimes you're going to find yourself underneath the bridge. Right. Now, is there anything you have to be careful of down there underneath the bridge? I mean, uh, obviously, obviously, if there's you know, water going by, you, know, you need to be aware of that. But what else? Well, I think all your critter scares that you would normally have anywhere. Now, if you're in an urban area... You might have something more of the rodent type situation mm -hmm. or uh, other type of critters that you may not expect. But you're always going to have to be very uh, aware and keen of spiders and uh, snakes, that type of thing as well. That's right. Of course, you also have Old Man Perkins from Scooby-Doo that lives under there, too. And so... Uh, plus an occasional <laughs> troll. A, a troll. There we go. That's right. Okay. What else do we have? What's next? And this is... Oh, okay. This is uh, more... Uh, uh, open area cache or where is this this is actually in frankenmuth michigan believe uh -huh. it or not and this is a spot that is by a park like area mm -hmm. wide open you're right on the midstream midway of one of the major uh areas so there are muggles everywhere right so you often you have to really have that invisible cloak turned on high uh the geocache is hidden in some uh some foliage there that's the type of thing that you have to be extremely aware of your surroundings. And, of course, I wore something that's going to blend right in so nobody's going to notice <laughs> I was going to say, that doesn't look like the cloak of invisibility. But, I mean, in, in those kind of situations, it is real that you want to be less noticeable. But it's more a matter of, what, attitude and uh, the way you move around the area, isn't it? Yeah, I, what I call that is geocaching with confidence. If you mm -hmm. look like you belong, people aren't even going to give you a second look. Right, yeah, if you're tippy-toeing in and out and it look, you look like you don't want people to see you, they'll see you. Yeah, the second you start looking like you're looking for other people to see if they're looking at you, that's when you look suspicious. That's right, yeah. Act like the building inspector or something. Yeah, that's the best way to go. That'll okay. Go All right, well, we're going to come back with more. We're going to look at some uh, woodland hides and how to find them uh, when we come back on Geocaching World. Got a question or a comment about geocaching? Send it to geocache at rbnn.tv or leave us a voicemail at 877-578-RBNN, extension 714. Tell us about a cache you especially enjoyed finding, and we may feature it in an upcoming episode. Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV NewsNet and cannot be returned. For more TV like this from the world of RVs, head to RVNN.com.